and welcome to Forest Community Church's Carol Services. We are so pleased that you've joined us here online. Thank you. My name is Adairin Taylor Roberts. And I'm Tim Cracknell, the pastor at the Forest Community Church. And if this is your first time you've been able to join us for one of our services, an extra special welcome to you wherever you are. Hopefully you're sat by your Christmas tree enjoying this carol service, which we're really excited to bring to you. Yes, we are so pleased that you've joined us here and we have an action-packed program for you today and we are just going to kick it right off now with one of our favourite Christmas carols yes. and it is Once in Royal David City. Brilliant. I just love that's one of my favorites so um, thank you girls off to a great start and um, I know many of you are joining us today because you're thinking about uh, Cinderford Sings you've been part of the virtual choir that we had and uh, I know it was um, actually um, all you can have, uh, people heard an audio version of this um, only uh, on Saturday morning on BBC Radio Gloucester and also Forest Radio as well so um, but we want to see the actual proper version uh, later on in our program, later on our service, is going to be one of our massive highlights. So hang in there for Cinderford Sings, you will not be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Really special. Oh definitely, I'm really looking forward to that and just seeing everyone's faces um, on screen singing together. So do join us for that a bit later on in our program. So I'm going to bring the first reading for our carol service today. It's from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. 
He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is this Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. When Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared, then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Thanks, Lauren. So now we're going to have a beautiful rendition of Gaudete, and it simply means rejoice. It was actually performed by the Forest Community Church Choir here in the building last Christmas. Mm. So we've got a wonderful recording for you of that. So this was last year before we had safety rules in place. <laughs> um, but we just hope that you enjoy that and get a real feel and sense of what you know Christmas can be like when we're in person. So enjoy. So lovely to see uh, people in church and uh, in our in previous times before COVID came and hit us and uh, just yeah just so encouraging. It was really good to see thank you to the choir there. So we are going to have a couple of creative and musical pieces that follow on directly from one another and we're going to kick it off with a slightly different retelling of the nativity Yes, using puppets. Using puppets. <laughs> and you may recognise the, the tune of the song that's played to it, but the words are different. So keep an eye out, read the words because they're really, really important. They have been changed, but it's really, really fun. It's, yeah, you'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I think you will. And then uh, we're going to go from that into a, another really powerful piece, um, which Natalie Freeman is going to sing with Fiona uh, backing her. And it's uh, Comfort and Joy, but uh, some 
very familiar Christmas lyrics in there as well. I think we're really lucky actually. We get the whole of the Taylor family there. Yeah. Aside from Matt, sorry Matt. Mm. But it's really great. They're backed up by them and it's in mm. a beautiful, beautiful composition together. Yeah, you've got to enjoy it for a treat. And then of course then we can all join together and sing one of the classic carols, O Come Are You Faithful. So, you know, if you like the singing, join along with us on that one too. Definitely. Thank you everyone. In the town of his ancestry Open your eyes Look up to the skies and see He's just a poor boy Foretold by prophecy Because the wise men come Wise men go Angels high Shepherds low this is how God's love shows It's a wondrous story to me To me Mary just got the word The angel did appear But he told her not to fear Now it's just begun Your son is gonna wash our sins away Mary Ooh, The God who reigns on high Has sent his son through you to die for Come, wise men, go, will Herod let him live? Herod, go, oh, he will not let him live. Better go, Herod, he will not let him live. Better go, Herod, he will not let him live. Better go, Herod, he will not let him live. Better go, Herod, he will not let him go. Go, 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 go. Mary, Joseph, Mary, Joseph. Mary, Joseph, better go to Egypt now. God has saved his son, repent for me, for me. This 
This is how God's love shows. Come and join.
Well, thank you to everyone who contributed to those amazing items. They were superb, weren't they? And uh, let, let's hear more of the Christmas story, shall we, Darren? So, again from Matthew chapter 2, and this is verses 13 to 21. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal act fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. Yeah, so we're going to have another song which just ties into that reading. So over to the Taylor family. Luli Lula, the little tiny child, Bye bye, Luli Lule. Oh, sisters, too, how may we do for to preserve this day? This poor youngling for whom we do sing. Bye bye, Luli. Charged he hath this day, his men of might in his own sight, all young children to, to slay. That woe is me, poor child, for thee, and evermore. Well, thank you to the Taylor family for that beautiful a cappella version of the Coventry Carol that was really, really thoughtful and moving. So, yes, so what's next, Tim? <laughs> We're going to have another amazing. Um, a song which Dan and Rosie are going to bring to us, Light of the World, which I know you will love. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a, a carol which we're going to sing, which is one of the very popular carols, Joy to the World. Excellent. Mm.
Well, thank you for that. So now is the moment I think we've all been waiting for. Is it here, Tim? Are we ready? We are ready, I think, for the premiere uh, of the virtual choir, 63 Strong Voice Choir from Cinderford Sings. I gathered, um, thank you, a massive thank you to everyone who contributed towards it. Um, we had so many people send, upload their videos, all recorded on their phones. From all over the world, not just Cinderford. No. So we had from America, we had from South Africa, we have had from all over the UK, and of course, Cinderford. <laughs> Primarily. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, if, it's, if that's you, thank you for joining us and for helping us in this project. And I think you'll be pretty pleased with the results. Mm -hmm. um, we're just really excited. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you to the whole team of people who helped to put it together, but particularly for Fiona, Taylor and Lizzie Bell, mm -hmm. who've done hours and hours and hours of work <laughs> to get it together. So uh, enjoy. Half the Herald Angels Sing. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. Thank yeah. you again to everyone who mm. took part. It was so good to see all your faces there smiling and singing. It really, really was a joy. So thank you. I can't wait to see it again, Tim. Yeah, and I love the trumpet coming through at the end. You know, it's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was such a fun thing to do, definitely. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. So, um, also, I mean, one of the things I think is really important that we grasp is that church isn't something we do. It's actually more about Jesus and how he affects us and how he changes our lives. So we put together a little montage for you, just a, lots of little snappy pieces from people um, just to share a little bit. So we ask them two questions, you know, how long they've been a Christian and what's the biggest difference it's made in their life? Mm -hmm. So... 
have a listen. Mm -hmm. And all these people that you're going to hear from now are actually members of our Forest Community Church. And like Tim says, it's mm -hmm. not just about this building, it's not about coming along to church on Sunday, it's about the difference that Jesus makes in your life and as you live your life. So we really hope that you're inspired by this. Uh, when I was about 13. I, I became a Christian when I was 10. I became a Christian when I was about 5. I became a Christian when I was about 13. I became a reborn Christian 15 years ago. I became a Christian when I was about 30 years old. I'd grown up in a Christian home, but it wasn't until I was 16 that I became a Christian. When I was 12 years old. 32 years ago. I became a Christian when I was eight years old, and then when I was in my 20s, I uh, recommitted my life to Jesus. I'm Sally, um, I've been a Christian since I was 15, and I'm now nearly 50, so that's quite a long time. I became a Christian when I was four, but I really committed my life when I was 14. When I was 15. I became a Christian, I think, when I was nine, 10. Um, and I've probably had a few recommitments along the way. I was 42 when I gave my life to Jesus. Before then, uh, I had had bouts of quite deep unhappiness and depression for several years. I became a Christian when I was six, but I definitely did it again when I was eight because I was scared that I'd done it wrong. I, was, I too was young when I got, became a Christian. I was only eight. Um, I became a Christian, well, I was only three, so I probably didn't really know what it meant. Um, I recommitted my life um, when I was 13. I've been a Christian now for quite a few years, um, but I would say that in the last two years, it's meant more to me than, than ever. It's given me hope and I feel more compassionate and uh, friendly to everybody now. Um, the biggest change, I think, is that um, I have security and I know where I'm going when I die. I have a security and a sense of peace inside. Before I became a Christian, I went to church, um, but it was just a religious behaviour. I didn't have that knowledge of God and that sense of peace that I have now. The biggest thing for me is God is a constant throughout my life. The biggest change has been a calm assurance uh, and a real hope for the future. That um, I know I've got with me all the time. It's made me less judgmental. The difference that Jesus has made in my life is that um, I used to be quite self-sufficient and just unlike some people and that was fine but now Jesus has shown me how to really love people and depend on people and um, really want to be with people and have other people know Jesus. I'm really grateful because I've had a lifetime of, of having an incredible set of values and hope to live by. The, the biggest thing about being a Christian, I think, is not focusing on my, on my own needs and actually trying to focus on what God, God wants. It's given me peace of mind. Knowing God's always there for me, a rock. Some of the times when we've had our things like our kids were ill when they were young, we really had to grab hold of God and, and you know, get a lot deeper in our relationship with Him because of, we had real needs. And uh, you know, to me, that's the biggest change that's taken place in in my life. It's just the reality of needing God and reaching for Him and, and getting the benefit of uh, you know the depth of His love in our lives. So. Yeah, knowing that being reassured that there is there is something more than this and to life that there is there is something better to come and uh, and not having fear fear of the future the uh, the biggest thing that's changed for me is realizing that life is better to be lived not for me uh, but for what god wants I did have a, a peace that god is always with me and is looking out for me and has a plan for me the difference that Jesus has made in my life is he gives me a reason to get out of bed in the morning. I have hope and joy because of him. The biggest change for me has been knowing that I am a child of God and that I am completely loved 
and that I have absolute freedom in that. Um, freedom to change, freedom to grow, freedom to live this amazing life that God has in store for me, that he has planned from the very beginning and one that is far bigger and more beautiful than I could ever imagine. And I love sharing that good news with other people that God has amazing plans for them and that he loves them dearly and he wants them to have a good life. So yeah, that's been the biggest change for me. Let us pray. Dear loving Lord, you didn't come to a perfect world. You came to a people full of complexity and confusion. Your birth itself, surrounded by conflict, doubt and fear. You came humbly, O Lord, born of a virgin to a simple family, to walk a journey of tears and glory. Now come again, dear Jesus, come to our fragile hearts and let our hearts be your manger. Prepare that quiet place where peace and joy are born again. O oh Lord, let me be humble, receiving and giving your ever-loving mercy. May my soul sing praises to only you, for you alone are holy. You alone are the Lord, the Most High, Jesus Christ. In your sacred name we pray. Amen. Well, 2020, I think, will be noted as one of the most difficult years that perhaps any of us can remember. And it's, uh, but yet this last week or so has produced a highlight for me. And that highlight was actually the, the Cinderford Christmas Parade. You know, it was great fun. Those of you who were around the parade, there was a real happy atmosphere about the place. There was that warmth of human expression and delight as suddenly after being confined and restricted all year, we have just get out and celebrate something about Christmas. And uh, it wasn't, it was full of joy. And for me, obviously, going through in the church uh, with the church nativity scene on the back of the, uh, the, the pickup truck I was driving, uh, it was particularly exciting because as we came around every little corner and met both of the crowds in Cinderford last weekend, um, you know, there was this constant ooing and ahhing as people went, oh, there's baby Jesus. And there was that excitement and that expectation and that joy. And it was really thrilling uh, just to hear those spontaneous responses. But of course, last year has been a, a, a year like no other. And um, it's not been easy. But one of the pluses of a year like this is that it's, it's kind of given us all a jolt. You know, COVID forces us to stop. And it gives us space to evaluate and to evaluate the direction of our lives. And to you know, sometimes just, you know, we're on that sort of treadmill, aren't we, sometimes through life. And we feel a little bit like that proverbial hamster and can't get off. And I think COVID has kind of forced us all to get off that treadmill to some extent and take a stock of where we're at, where we're going, what we're doing. And particularly this Christmas time, it gives us an opportunity to take stock of what Christmas is all about. You know, every year we have the same office parties, we have that gathering of clans and all the family and relatives that come around, turkey, telly, drink, festivities. You know, we enjoy all these things, they're great fun. And it's kind of part of what Christmas is about, isn't it? But somewhere in the background, the story of Christmas, the story of the birth of Jesus gets lost and is often consigned to the same bracket as Santa Claus, reindeer and snow. And we never seem to get snow at Christmas, do we? But the, the songs are full of it. So this evening, just for a few moments, let's just stop and review the eyewitness reactions that very first Christmas to the Christmas story, to Jesus' birth. And as we look at this, we'll look at different people and their responses. And the first one I want us to think about is Herod, King Herod. You know, when King Herod um, was confronted with this information that actually a, a new king had been born. You know, it, the Bible tells us in Matthew uh, chapter one of us, uh, th uh, th there it says that he, he was disturbed when he heard the news. He was disturbed. You see, he saw Jesus as a threat. And 
It meant that he actually tried to kill Jesus as a baby and he had a whole load of boys slaughtered. But then there was also the leading religious leaders of that day. You know, they knew God's promise. They knew that God had promised in years gone by that he would send a Messiah, that he would send a saviour, a child to be born to, to save their people from their sins. He'd promised that years ago and they, 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 they studied the Bible, they studied the Old Testament, they knew what it said. But yet they refused to recognise Jesus as the saviour. They refused to recognise him as the Messiah. And they actually did put him to death later on in his life. But then there were the wise men. <laughs> and they're called wise men for a reason. They were wise. And we know from the record, the historical record in the Bible, it says that they were, these wise men saw the star as it rose. And they said, we've come to worship him. You see, they were highly respected men. They were advisors to, to a king or kings, almost certainly. And they were noted and known for their wisdom. They had done their research and they checked out and they saw this new star which gave them an indication of a, a baby was going to be born and this baby was a very special child. And so having done their research, having done their homework, they came to discover this child for themselves. And they came joyfully to worship Jesus. But then lastly, there were the shepherds. You know, these were kind of like peasant farmers and they were considered some of the lowest in society. So you had the elite wise men and then you had some of the lowest in society. And the angels came to them and brought them the, the good news that this child had been born in, in Bethlehem. They would find him laid in a, in a manger, wrapped in cloths. And so they hurriedly went to Bethlehem to see Jesus. Luke's Gospel tells us. And you can sense they came with that mixture of nervous excitement, but also a bit of scepticism. You know, was it really going to be how they'd understood it to be? Was it really going to unfold like this in front of their eyes? And they came to check it out. You know, they were just practical farmers and they needed to see before they believed. But then what do we read in the Bible? Well, the Bible tells us um, what, uh, what they found in, in Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 17. And it says that uh, after, they, uh, after seeing him, that's Jesus, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angels had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they'd heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. You see, they weren't easily, um, they, were, they weren't going to believe easily. But the angel had told them some very specific things. And when they went, they found it just as they'd heard. And of course, then their response was to tell everyone. You see, four different groups of people, they all had the same information, but they reacted in four different ways. Herod wanted to kill Jesus. The religious leaders um, eventually did kill Jesus. But of course, we know Easter came later and he rose from the dead. They couldn't keep him in the tomb. Wise men, they brought their gifts uh, to honour and to worship Jesus. Shepherds, they checked out the facts and they told everyone about Jesus. Let me simply ask you this today, what about you? Are you like Herod? Do you see Jesus as a threat? That if you explore it further, you might actually find it's true. And you don't want to know it's true. You'd rather it be consigned to fairy tales than to be truth. So you're just keeping it at arm's length and you're closing your ears to the truth, to the message. Are you like the religious leaders? Uh, that something within you tells you that it's actually true if you were to check it out. But you're frightened because it might bring change to your life. You're frightened that maybe you'll, you'll lose uh, credibility with your friends. They consider you could become a religious nut or something. Or are you like the wise men and the shepherds? You know, they checked out the facts. Wise men using their skill, using their, 
uh, their knowledge and their wisdom. The shepherds in a very practical way. And they discovered it to be true. And they, they were filled with joy. And their lives were never the same again. You know, what's your response going to be to the birth of Jesus? Well, let me encourage you as I close to take the time during this unusual COVID Christmas to explore the evidence for yourself. You know, you may find that if you explore the evidence for yourself that this could be the very best Christmas you have ever had. Isn't that worth exploring? I think it is. You see, it's good news. And I think you owe it to yourself to check it out. You really do. You see, the prophet who, one of the many prophets who foretold Jesus' birth, 400 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah, he said these words, seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. You see, we have that opportunity now. Don't just go, well, I'll do it someday. You know, I'm not quite ready for this yet. You have a golden opportunity. This COVID Christmas will give you less distractions than you've ever had uh, before over a Christmas period. Don't miss it. Take the opportunity. Check it out. Let me encourage you to do a couple of things. First of all, check it out by reading um, Mark's Gospel, one of the accounts of Jesus' life. And just get, you know, if, if you don't, know, you don't have a Bible, uh, I encourage you to read it in a modern translation. New Living Translation is a fantastic translation. You can even download it off a free app called U Bible. But uh, if you're struggling to find it, just message me at tim at fcchurch.co.uk and uh, I'll get you in touch with you. I'll, I'll get a Bible delivered to your house that you can read. So read Mark's Gospel. It's just 16 very short chapters. It'll only take you a few minutes. And it just starts at the beginning. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So it's worth exploring. It's good news. And do that, but also sign up for our Christianity Explored course. You know, we're going to be running one in the new year. And this is a, something which has blessed so many people, even just these last few weeks and months here in Cinderford. Uh, a number of people have uh, engaged with the Christianity Explored course and found it to be so, so helpful as we just explored and looked at the facts, looked at the truth, explored uh, what's Christianity about, who is Jesus? And it's a really safe place to ask your questions. Take the time and explore, check it out for yourself. But maybe some of you are actually ready. You're actually at that point where you go, do you know what, I'm ready to respond. I'm, I've been quietly checking this out for a while now and I'm, I'm good to go. I, I don't need any convincing. I just want to become a follower of Jesus. And I want, to, um, I want to just sign up and I want to, to live my life for him. Well, I'm going to just pray a very short prayer, prayer similar to how I prayed when I first became a follower of Jesus. And I'd encourage you to echo in your heart and your mind the words that I pray. And if you do, please just message me afterwards because I'd love to pray for you. I'd love to encourage you and to support you on your spiritual journey as you move forward uh, in this exciting uh, new phase of life because it's good news. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that first Christmas. We thank you that when Jesus came to earth all those years ago, 2,000 years ago, it was good news. And thank you that the wise men and the shepherds could see this. And Lord, help us to have those open minds to explore. Perhaps some today are exploring what it is. Is it true? Is it real? How does it affect me? Lord, help them to, to, to have their eyes open to your truth. But Lord, others are ready to go and they want to trust you. Lord, I pray for each one who's at that stage. Lord, help them. I pray, Lord, now that uh, f uh, as they join me in this prayer, Lord, uh, that they might just know what it is to trust you. Lord, I commit my life to you. I trust you. I thank you for, for, for sending Jesus to this earth to be my saviour. Lord, today I want to follow you. I want to become your follower. Thank you that he came as a saviour to, to die for my sins on the cross. And thank you that you give me your new life and enable me to live this new life in your power. Help me to live in your strength each day, I pray. Amen. You know, if you uh, committed yourself to Jesus, if you began that journey of faith, if you um, move forward uh, in, and just echo that prayer in some way, just please let me know and we love to encourage you and support you. That's what we do as a church. That's why we exist. So God bless you.
and have a really happy Christmas. service and we're just so glad you've joined us and uh yeah we, we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have uh, it's been good hasn't it mm, it's been really great and it's thank you to everyone who's involved in making the service uh it's been really great to work together as a team but definitely most of all thank you to those at home for joining us yeah. online i hope you had a good a couple of mince pies a cup of tea <laughs> a bit of mulled wine not whilst i was singing hopefully <laughs> that could have been a disaster might have sprayed the screen <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's been fantastic and, and maybe where some of you may want to respond, you know, you, you perhaps want to get in touch and just want to know more about um, faith and uh, perhaps want to explore, uh, use, going through the Christianity Explored course, then um, connect with us via connect.fcchurch.co.uk and it will come up on the screen for you. Uh, drop us an email um, or if you want to have other questions and maybe you need some help with something and we're happy to, to help as much as we can. Uh, that's what we do as a church and uh, because we love people, we care about you. And uh, of course, you know, if you want us to pray for something, if you have something particularly that you would like us to pray for, you know, Christmas, especially this year, can be, it, it's, it's not going to be the easiest. And uh, maybe you have some things you'd like us to pray for. Just drop us an email and uh, we can pray for it and it'll come through to, to us uh, and we will pray for you uh, and encourage you in that situation that you find yourself in. So let me just close in a prayer and, um, and then we'll say goodbye. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together like in this way, and uh, although we're in different places all over the country and probably the world, uh, we thank you that we can celebrate Christmas and the birth of Jesus and all it means to us. And Lord, I pray that each one of us will receive that uh, peace that comes from knowing Jesus and we'll, we'll be like those shepherds, you know, we'll be full of that joy and that excitement as we uh, discover more about who you are. So Lord, I pray for everyone at this Christmas time that they'll know your strength and your comfort and your peace. Uh, wherever they might be. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, you'll be pleased to know, I was just about to say we'll sing you out, but it's not <laughs> Tim and I singing you out, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Rosie and the wonderful worship team are going to sing us all out this today of our carol services with We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And so from myself and from Tim, yes. we wish you a Merry Christmas, as do the rest of the church here, and a Happy New Year. Yep. God bless and goodbye.